What's going on, everyone? Happy Sunday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Sunday edition of the Pandemic Update for Sunday, July 7th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily Pandemic Update on all things COVID and any other virus that could be a health threat to you. Let's face it, there are a lot of different viruses out there, and each of them carry a different risk. And heck, COVID? While it may be one big virus, it has a lot of different variants. And some variants are capable of doing different things. We don't even know what all these different variants can do because, quite frankly, we hardly test. We hardly do much research. It's it's crazy where we have come to. And I at least try and find any information there is available out there and then report it to you because the media really doesn't do it that much. You hardly ever hear the media mention anything about COVID anymore. 2020, it was the big headline in the news. 2024, you hardly hear about it, but here we are. We're in the middle of a summer surge, a summer surge that is not letting up. People are sick. There are people, I'm hearing from people saying that when they're testing positive for COVID right now, a couple things are happening. One, they're not testing positive until symptoms start. In other words, if they've had exposure, it's not happening until well into symptoms at this point. Two, some people are telling me that it's taken them a long time to test negative. And three, they're saying they are getting very sick. That to them, it is worse than the flu right now. So, yes, COVID is still a thing. COVID did not end. And it's still a very serious disease. Alrighty, if you're new here, subscribe down below. Share these videos with anyone you know. Leave a comment down below. Give this a thumbs up. The more people that hit that like button, the more YouTube pushes out this content. And it has been really apparent as of lately that that works. It all, what also works is that notification bell. If you hit the notification bell, you'll be notified when I do my latest update. The more people that are notified, the more YouTube's going to push this out. So let's try for over 200 thumbs up button hits today because I want to keep as many people informed, in the know, and safe as possible. Let's start off by talking about Florida. Florida sees COVID-19 surge in emergency rooms near last winter's peak. Remember yesterday, we showed all those different emergency rooms. And if you didn't see it, what we did yesterday was we talked about the number of people who were going to the hospital, to the emergency department, who were diagnosed with COVID. They were showing up positive with COVID. And Florida, I was telling you it was really bad, and I said there's been several stories. I decided, let's go with one of these stories today. And Florida's number of emergency department visits just continues to go up. The week average of emergency room patients with COVID-19 has reached 2.64 in Florida, according to CDC data, updated Friday, and now ranking among the highest of any state during this summer's COVID-19 wave. And you can see it here. It just continues to rise in Florida. And I suspect now that we've just had 4th of July and that it's very hot down the south, where people go indoors at this time of year, unlike the north, we are going to see this only continue to rise. More on 4th of July in just a little bit. Taking a look at this, well, this could be related to 4th of July as well. This could be related to just the summer surge. Do you know someone sick right now can be COVID or any other virus. This is a poll I decided to do yesterday evening. 351 votes so far. I retweeted it again as there's uh, four hours left to maybe get some more attention. And well, guess what? 72.4% of people said yes. 27.6% said no. And some people are saying three people with COVID, two with exposures. Someone said times six. In other words, they know six people sick right now. And then someone said times two with COVID right now. So yes, people are still getting sick. And yes, people are sick right now. Let's take a look at the pollen levels across the United States. We will refresh this. Today, 60% of the country is in a low to medium status. And there is some yellow in the Northeast today, meaning medium. And there's a lot of medium to high out in the West Coast. Orange is starting to show. But what we do not see on this map, and we have not seen for a while, is red. So that is a good thing. The spring portion of allergy season has passed. But we do run at the risk of other things. Tree pollen still is a problem. Ragweed, uh, grass, all kinds of different things. And we will actually see it pick up again at the end of the summer and as we head towards fall when, you know, when the leaves will start to come off. And more things are growing, like crops right now. Hey, all this stuff leads to pollen. 
Speaking of pollen, let's talk about other air quality values now. And they're not good. It's bad for a ton of people, millions of people, to be honest with you. Along the I-95 corridor in the east, we're seeing oranges. We're seeing even brighter oranges. We're seeing a lot of yellow anywhere east of the Mississippi. But then we come up to Canada, and we concern ourselves with this. It would appear wildfires have gotten going once again up in Alberta, Canada, and uh, this is not good. I'm seeing all kinds of red here. I'll do some investigating. If I find anything, I'll tweet it on both of my Twitter accounts. Yes, more about the other Twitter account in a moment. California, it's very dry there. It's very hot. Wildfires are a concern. Air quality is also a concern. And then down in Texas, air quality, we're not too much concerned about that. It's eastern Texas we're concerned about because of Hurricane or, well, what will become again, Hurricane Burrow. Right now, it's still a tropical storm. It is forecasted to become a hurricane this evening. If you live anywhere from Houston down to Corpus Christi, and even up in Arkansas as well, please take this seriously. Wind, tornado threat, storm surge, flooding, storm surge being along the coast. So I, we, I do need to keep you safe from that as well. All right, taking a look at what is going on with heat-related illnesses. Expect this map to continue to fill in because when you have hot conditions plus bad air quality, it's just not going to be a good situation. And it is very hot in the West Coast. I'm expecting to see this brown pop up pretty soon where things are going to be much higher than average. And you get the idea. We'll get an update on this again tomorrow. I have another place where I talk about the weather and where I talk about climate. It is Climate Data Report over on X, and I also do have another channel. We did post an update there today. Let me refresh this so it's up to date. I did post an update over on my Climate Data Report YouTube channel. Check that out. I do have an update on Tropical Storm Burl. What will become at least Category 1 Hurricane Burl is what's expected to be at landfall. All right, Philadelphia for Saturday had another 856 EMS incidents. It was very hot yesterday. The heat index was well over 100 here, plus the bad air quality results in a lot of different calls, respiratory difficulty, and we are in the summer surge, although it's not rapidly rising here yet in southeast Pennsylvania. It will at some point. Taking a look at what's going on with EMS calls today in southeast Pennsylvania, Montgomery County is seeing respiratory emergency, cardiac emergency, not terribly busy, just eight calls at this time. And over in Chester County, there are a few calls to be had. Sick person, unresponsive person, respiratory difficulty falls, cardiac arrest in North Coventry Township, that's not good. And Callan Township is seeing a stroke at this time, so not good. So yes, there are some calls to be had. All right, today is Sunday. We usually look at wastewater on Sunday. Let's start off with Pennsylvania, since we just talked about Pennsylvania. And in Pennsylvania, we're not seeing any wastewater sites at this time that are showing large increases. We do have some that are increasing, Center County being one of them, and another is down in York County. And we're actually seeing a decrease this time in the Lehigh Valley. We're not seeing any changes up in the Poconos, though I expect that may change relatively soon as they just had a huge influx of people for the 4th of July holiday. Some of those people have left now. Now they're going back home, so we'll have to watch these resort areas. More on that in just a moment. Walgreens this week is 36.5% positivity rate nationally, and you can see here that is going up and it continues to go up it's up by 2.5 percent this week all right i wanted to take a moment to take a look at places that could potentially be rising soon because of the fourth of july holiday take a look at this it was a major holiday week in america we celebrated america's birthday back on july 4th and take a look at the traffic map around the country you're seeing a lot of red you're seeing a lot of yellow there are people on the move all over the place. Some of this is because it's summertime, there's road work projects, roadways go down to one lane, and it backs up. Others is because, well, people simply went away. And take a look at this. You can see here, the Northeast was really on the move for 4th of July. People are leaving Maine. People are leaving the beaches in Connecticut to head back to New York City. People are leaving upstate New York. And we just talked about how I think there could be a rise soon in the Pocono Mountains. Take a look at this. Uh, you're seeing big backups leaving these areas. And these people, if they got infected, well, now they're traveling back home. They're going to go back to work tomorrow. Schools are not back yet, but, you know, there's going to be transmission. 
I think there's going to be a continued increase. The Northeast states are not seeing a massive increase yet. Uh, New York State is. Uh, maybe some places are, but not equivalent to what's happening in the South and the West Coast. This could be what gets the ball rolling. You see people moving here, even down in Virginia. Down in the South is seeing a massive surge. Well, if you take a look at the map there, there's people on the move there. The West Coast, it's still early out in the West Coast, but you can see here, people are leaving Las Vegas, going back to L.A., People are leaving places all over the place, the Great Lakes region. Yes, people traveled there too. So we have to see what happens. Basically, the overall point I'm trying to make is we're not about to peak with the summer surge. It's going to continue for several more weeks. And in some places that weren't really rising that much, the pace may pick up a little bit. We'll have to see what happens. All right, taking a look at Canada wastewater. Four wastewater sites in Canada are high at this time. Nine are moderate, 10 are low, 37 new sites, and 24 sites total are showing an increase this week. All right, let's take a look at some CDC data here, shall we? And the CDC has this map here. There's many different colors on here. There's blues, there's oranges, there's red. I'll explain what these mean. Light blue, I mean the really dark blue. That's a color we like. That's low COVID, 0 to 19%. There's only 295 sites in that category now. Lighter shade, 20 to 39%. 458 sites, even lighter shade, 40 to 59% COVID increase detected. 276 sites, 60 to 79% COVID detected. 176 sites, and 80 to 100% COVID detected. That's red, that's really high, that's bad. 56 sites, and we can see there's red and orange in the southeast at this time. A ton of red and orange sites in the west coast, especially Utah, is really doing bad at this time which is very concerning. And of course, California still has a lot of red and orange. The hope with California, at least my hope is, that probably within the next few weeks, I think we're going to see a peak in California. We saw it first in Hawaii, and I think at some point before July is done, I'm hoping California will start to peak as well. We'll see. Hope. I'm being hopeful here, but as of right now, California has not peaked yet, and clearly Utah has a problem because all those wastewater sites that are red. Again, we're seeing up here in the Great Lakes and the Northeast, we're not seeing a lot of orange and red yet. I think because of the 4th of July travel, which you just saw, you know, people went to resorts. They went to very cloud, crowded places. Yes, a lot of activities are outdoors, but hey, when you stay in hotels and places, you have to eat dinner, don't you? Inside restaurants and places, you know, that's a good reason for transmission. I think we're going to overall just see this map start to fill in with some more orange and red. I don't think it's going to be where it just skyrockets straight upward, but I think overall we'll see an increase in the number of red and orange sites going forward. And we're already seeing some now. New York City is seeing some. Let's take a look at what's going on in New York City. New York City has already been seeing a, a big increase. They're really an exception to the Northeast. New York State and uh, New York City especially has been seeing a bigger increase. Queens is literally going straight up on this. Here's Richmond. Uh, yeah, take a look at this. Yeah, New York, New York City is not doing well right now, and they have been high for quite some time. Hopefully, maybe second half of July or going into August, we can see this trend reverse. I don't know. I'm just being hopeful here. Right now, for the time being, New York City is on the rise. Please, if you're a New York City resident, and maybe you commute, maybe you take the subway or whatnot, get back to masking. You need to. It's, it's really high levels in New York City right now with COVID in wastewater. Let's take a look at another product from the CDC. And we can see here this shows various different levels when you average out all of the wastewater sites in a state. So, for example, we talked about Utah. Utah has 31 sites reporting. And if you average them all out, it comes up to very high levels. Also very high levels in Nevada. Just one site reporting. High levels in Washington, but we did note on the ER visits yesterday that Washington may be showing some signs of peaking. Very high levels in Hawaii, and Washington peaking is another reason why I think that maybe California is going to peak soon. And if you notice here, California is at high levels, but not very high levels. So that's interesting. Florida is still at very high levels. High in Arkansas, high in Missouri. And what's going on in Maryland? Maryland's coming in at high levels. And Massachusetts is now starting to reach high levels with six sites reporting. So 
we do see that the rise is starting in the northeast and take a look at this we do see that up in new york it's still coming up minimal for some reason i really don't understand it but once again new mexico is very high alaska is now down to moderate so i think alaska actually decreased somewhat that's a good sign taking a look now at some wastewater scan sites we're just only going to do a couple sites here then i do want to take a look at what's going on with chicago and Houston, Texas. So what we are going to do here is we're going to take a look at the regional and national levels. COVID, it continues to rise at this time. RSV, influenza, influenza, A and B, not an issue. And HMPV is dropping. Norovirus on the national level is medium, but dropping at this time. In the Midwest region for COVID at this time. Yeah, it's continuing to rise. It's really picking up the pace now. And I think that's just going to continue. You can see, if you notice here, it would represent that there's a faster rise here than was shown on the CDC. All the different data sources show different things. RSV at this time is low. Influenza A is low at this time. Influenza B, HMPV. But norovirus is still medium at this time. And the northeast, we see things are picking up the pace. Then you have one of these wonky movements down. Not understanding what that's all about because remember, sometimes they show these wonky movements and then they have to correct it and the correction ends up showing something completely different. Just assume that the northeast is somewhat rising still. We'll have to see what the update says. Now, who knows? I, it would be nice to say that's down, but I find that very hard to believe. RSV at this time is low. Influenza A, influenza B, and HMPV all low. Norovirus is medium at this time. In the south, we do note here that COVID levels, they are high. And take a look at this movement. Yes, it's a one of those wonky movements, but it really has been rising pretty quickly in the south at this time. And we do know that end of July or early August is when the south usually peaks for the summer wave so we'll have to see what happens given it started earlier who knows it may peak earlier we'll see rsv is rising a little bit at this time one of those lonky moments but it's very low levels at this time influenza a influenza b very low hmpv is very low norovirus is showing a slight increase and is in the medium all right west coast at this time in the west coast we do note things are continuing to rise wonky movement but overall it's upward for covid rsv is low influenza a is low influenza b is low hmpv is low and norovirus is dropping wonky movement we'll say it's dropping but medium at this time all right let's take a look at what's going on in covid wastewater in chicago if we can and taking a look at what's going on there we can see here that chicago let's uh, just there we go. Chattanooga. Let's click on Chattanooga and see what's happening there. Things are relatively flat at this time. We're just going to only go through a few wastewater sites. Little Village starting to see a rise at this time. And what is the population of this wastewater? 29,000 population. And Chicago, Lawn, Ashburn, this has a population of 77,000 starting to rise at this time. There's quite a few wastewater sites here. I'm actually really surprised. O'Brien Treatment Plant. Wow. 1.2 million population. This was rising. Then it leveled off slightly. And let's see here. What's going on at... How about Norwood? Jefferson Park. Look at that. That's starting to rise a little bit as well. We'll take a look at a few more of these sites during the week because I also do want to show you what's going on in Houston, Texas. And I'm going to be looking to see if there's any more cities that still have dashboards. I need to start doing that. We need to include more places in these updates. And we can see generally in Houston, seeing a lot of up arrows, which does represent increases. We are seeing some minus arrows. What happens if we click on these? And that does represent that there would be a decrease, I assume, right? So these up arrows, anywhere with the up arrow, is seeing an increase for COVID at this time. And quickly, let's just go back to, I want to end on a good note today. Let's go back to wastewater scan. Let's go to Hawaii. And we're going to show you Hawaii at this time has peaked. Here's Honolulu. And Honolulu for wastewater is now dropping. And one more Hawaii site. Here's what's going on on Sand Island in Honolulu. And you can see here, thankfully, Hawaii is starting to drop. I hope that will be something that starts to become a trend in Washington. As we know, ER visits are starting to drop there and then spread to California and elsewhere. If you like this update today, folks, give it a thumbs up. Want to see more content like this? Subscribe to my channel down below. Share these videos with anyone you know. 
Remember to hit that notification bell. The more that are notified about the video and see it when it comes out, the more YouTube's going to push this content out, and we can help keep more people safe. And, of course, subscribe, thumbs up, all that good stuff. Have a fantastic Sunday afternoon. I will see you all again tomorrow for the Monday edition of the Pandemic Update. Until I see you then, stay safe, everyone, and thanks for watching.